Okay, it's uh, it's been a while since I've done a video, and I thought I'd do one on a control head that I'm refurbishing for a customer. This one just arrived. Uh, it was one of my eBay sales. I sell them on eBay. I sell refurbs on eBay, uh, QTH, QRZ, all the other places. So here's what the uh, what the control head looks like coming in. Uh, it's a little dirty, a little nasty. The readout is gone. I mean, there is nothing left of this thing. I have no idea how anybody was able to uh, uh, to operate a radio clearly that must have been using a, an external uh, cat-connected monitoring because there's there's no way. I can't even tell you what frequency this is on. So uh, anyway, so what we what we do when we get them in, very first thing we do is we begin the process by cleaning up all of the plastic shell. And uh, we'll get that... Uh, Get that done and get right back to you and let you see the difference on what it looks like after the shell's been all cleaned up. Okay, we're uh, through the first cleanup phase of the uh, of the unit. Uh, by no means finished, but we just we start off and uh, the rubber tire's a little better. We get we got a ways to go on it. That's the rubber band or tire it's referred to. It goes around the VFO knob. One of the things I noticed on this particular uh, uh, control head. In addition to the uh, LCD being very, very bad, the VFO is also loose. I tried to do this with one hand. Um, if you can see that movement there, the VFO encoder is uh, gotten loose over time. And as part of the refurb, we have a proprietary process that we run the encoder through. It's all included in the in the refurb, uh, but it saves the uh, saves the customer about uh, I think it's about forty dollars for a new encoder. And actually, when we're done, it's we, we feel like it's as good, if not better, than it would be had we put a new encoder in. So anyway, we'll uh, we'll be doing that a little bit in further into the video uh, when we get the uh, the encoder out and take the whole unit apart. But outside the shell looks good, no scratches, no no chips, no uh, uh, spots on it that uh, would prevent it from looking like new when we're new when we're done here. The rear section looks really good. So uh, initial cleanup and checkout looks like uh, definitely have a, a control header here that we can make it look like new and maybe in the case of the VFO a little bit better than new. Okay after uh, cleaning up the rubber tire you can see the black gunk that we got off of the tire. The tire is now looking pretty much like a new, uh, like a new one. So, and the VFO knob itself looks good. The only thing wrong left with the VFO is the fact that the uh, the knob has a lot of play, oh, a lot of play in it. Uh, and they get, we run into this a lot, so it's not unusual to actually see. It's not easy to do one-handed. Um, it's it's pretty pretty common to see the uh, the VFO there we go oh, trying to get the tire not to move there we go I think we can see it now and you can actually hear it too if I pulled real hard on that I would uh, literally pull a shaft out so I, I really don't want to do that because that makes it just that much harder to fix okay so now we're starting the disassembly part of the process pulling the knobs um, Again, quite often this uh, this shaft breaks. I've gotten a few of them in. That's not an issue because actually the shaft and the encoder are all replaced, and we'll see that here in just a minute when I I show the uh, uh, the new panel that's coming in. Okay, now we're to the point where, and I'm I'm leaving out the minutia details like loosening screws, pulling knobs, and that kind of stuff. We now have the back off. Back's been unplugged from the uh, from the panel board. Um, there was a YouTube out there showing a guy just pulling the ribbon cable out of this connector. Uh, don't do that. There's a little latch here that needs to be pushed open. And uh, you you want to open that latch. And then the, the ribbon cable will practically fall out. Here's where the encoder plugs in. Here's where the volume control is soldered in. The soldering and unsoldering of the volume control is the only hands-on soldering that needs to happen in this refurb. So 
Uh, let's take it about a little further. Okay, so here's the old uh, panel board that's been uh, removed from the shell. And we'll, uh, we'll clean up the shell here in just a minute. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to unsolder the volume control connector right here. And we'll, once we get this completely out of the way, the other thing we're going to do, like I said, is I'm going to take that encoder apart and uh, fix it up so that it's uh, better than new. So we'll, uh, we'll get to those steps in just a couple minutes here. But right now we're going to focus on desoldering the, uh, the volume control knob. Okay, we've unsoldered the, uh, the volume control assembly. And uh, you can see that the, uh, the little pins that go into the, into the board are all filled with solder. What we're going to want to do here is uh, go ahead and, and use some uh, solder wick and clean those out. And I'll show you what that looks like when we're done. Okay, we've got the uh, solder wicking all done. And if I zoom in here, you can see those pins are no longer filled with solder which makes them much easier to slide into the new board. Uh, and that's what we want. We want everything ready for the new board. That's where all the expense of this is. The part from Yezu is $180 um, because you're essentially replacing pretty much the entire electronic assembly inside the control head. But it's still a lot cheaper than a new one. Anyway, so this is all, I'll, I'll clean it up here with some flux remover here in just a second just to make sure it's all nice and and bright and shiny, ready for the, the new board. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and remove the encoder and uh, uh, show you the uh, the encoder out of the out of the housing. Okay, the uh, the tensioner, that's what the tensioner assembly looks like. That's what the uh, threaded nut, you can see it's got flats on it. Um, I really don't do any more than finger tighten this thing. It's, it's a plastic assembly, so uh, putting a lot of force in there would be a very bad idea. Let me see if now I can do a better job of showing you the play. There we go. There's the end play on the encoder. And that's not good because over time that'll just keep getting more and more loose and finally it'll actually completely pull out of the assembly. So uh, we're going to be taking the encoder out and working on that next. So this is after the refurb of the encoder is done. The end play is completely removed. The encoder feels good, smooth, uh, nice and tight. Uh, feels just exactly like a new one would feel. And again, that's all part of the part of the service that we do here to make sure that uh, what you're getting back is uh, control head like new for a lot less than the cost of new. So anyway, uh, we'll be remounting this and cleaning up the inside of the shell. Uh, one of the things that uh, I pay particular attention to is over time this rubber sponge in here um, begins to get sticky degrades i don't try to take it out because honestly it's a huge huge mess and it really doesn't hurt anything uh, the only thing you want to make sure of is as you're taking the thing apart if you're trying to do this yourself and we'll talk about that in a minute um, if you're trying to do this yourself uh, don't attempt to take this rubber pad just make sure that the uh, little flakes and so forth that uh, have come out of that sponge are removed so you're not trapping that stuff inside of the uh, the new housing. Okay, the encoder is mounted back up again. The uh, shell has been cleaned out. The lower button assembly has been cleaned up, put back in place. The framing around that from the other side has all been cleaned. So uh, we're ready for the big step and that is getting the new uh, the new panel prepped and installed. Okay, this is the inner assembly in its uh, anti-static plastic bag. You see there's a new function encoder. It's that shaft and all that's brand new. Uh, right through there, you can see where we're gonna solder in the volume control. And uh, this, is, uh, this is what it looks like when I pull them out of the package. This is the reason why the refurbishing costs what it costs. This assembly right here is the complete assembly. It's the only way you can fix these. You cannot replace just simply the LCD screen uh, itself. You have to replace the entire assembly because Yezu actually changed the design from the old assembly, like the one that was in here, 
to the new one. Physically, they look identical, but the LCD screen itself will not play with the processor in this one. And essentially, if you were to take a new LCD screen only, which Yezu will only sell, uh, really won't sell, I guess I should say, just the LCD because of this. If you take a new LCD assembly, the LCD itself, not the entire panel, but just the LCD, and solder it into the old assembly, it won't work. It's, it, it basically is blank. I've tried it, just uh, doing some experimenting, and they, the, the two are not, the LCDs are not interchangeable. And I'll show you some differences here in just a second. Okay, I'm gonna show you something here real quick, and then we'll elaborate on this a little bit later. If you look at, let me see if I can zoom in on this. Here's how you can tell if you got a new design right real, real quickly. And that is that the flex print itself is like, looks like Kapton tape. It's uh, transparent. It's got the, uh, the yellowish Kapton look to it. Uh, and this is the area of issue with the, uh, with the LCD going bad. The old LCD, if I put it up here, the LCD, the flex print itself is a white cream color. The other one you can hardly see. This one's very stand, you know, very much stands out because it's white. This is the old design. This is the new design. It's it's partially covered by plastic. I'm not I'm not removing this plastic right now because that keeps the LCD in place. And it's real important that the amount of handling on this has to be very, very minimal. This thing is very, very fragile. And at 180 bucks, you don't want to wreck it. So anyway, uh Let's work on getting this in. Okay, so we have the uh, PC board in place and the wiring for the volume controller is all pushed back out of the way so it won't interfere with the, uh, with the cover being put on. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and connect this up. Uh, here we go. Let's see if I can do this with one hand here. Now, I'm not worried right now about the uh, speaker and the headphone jack and the pigtail that plugs into that because that won't have anything to do with uh, with taking a look at how this LCD looks brand spanking new. So we turn this over, get it right side up, give it a push, give it a push, there we go. And that's what the new uh, the new LCD looks like right there. Looks a lot better than uh, than what we started with, so uh, we're uh, we're ready to go forward and work on getting this uh, all fully assembled and do some final cleanup and uh, so forth. So we're we're pretty much ready to go here, except for uh, final assembly of knobs. Like I said, the encoder's all tight and secure now. It feels uh, feels like new. So anyway. Uh, Next step in the refurb. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get the uh, the back panel assembly on. We're gonna get that ribbon cable connected, and uh, we'll get right back to you. Showing that you can see that right now the ejector for that connector is out. I'll show you what that looks like when the uh, ribbon cable is in. Okay, here's the ribbon cable installed. You see now that it's in place and the ejector. Uh, Part of the connector is now pushed back into position and that actually locks that ribbon cable in place. They also use a little piece of masking tape to help secure this down so that when you install it it doesn't get all tangled up and folded in multiple places just one fold over one Z bend basically. So we'll uh, we'll get that cover on the buttons but uh, frankly 99% of these only just need a good cleanup. And I've had some pretty pretty rough looking ones, including one I showed a long time ago that actually came out of a semi-truck fire. And it was it was horrible looking and it cleaned up beautifully. So that's a really good plastic that Yeju uses for the, the housing on this and the, uh, uh, the, the silk screening or spray painting or however they, they do the lettering 
I mean, this lettering looks just as crisp as the day it was made. So there's, uh, there's really only the need for cleaning this up to make it look really good. Okay, one last thing I do, just kind of a, I don't know, fun finishing touch. When you get a new, uh, a new control head, there's a screen protector on it, and I actually reused the screen, the screen kit protector that comes with the panel assembly, and I just thought it was a nice touch to finish off with uh, a customer actually getting something that looks uh, pretty much like they just got a brand new control head when they unwrap it. So anyway, uh, that's really all there is to it. Uh, in just a second, I'm going to do a little bit of an autopsy on the old one and show you uh, where the issue is and so forth. So hang on, we'll get to that in just a second. Let me get this packed up and ready to go back to the customer. Okay, so here's the old uh, panel assembly that came out of the radio, the one that was just completely unreadable. Uh, I'll show you just a little bit and just a little bit where the area is that causes the problem and why you really, really can't fix it. Um, <clears throat> you can power these up uh, on a junk one like this, no problem, who cares, this is going in the trash anyway, but uh, I wouldn't play with the new ones this way again. If you decide that you want to do this yourself, uh, I think my cost of doing this is very, very reasonable, um, especially in light of everything you get, the fact that you're getting back a completely refurbished control head. And I saved enough money pretty close on just not having to replace the encoder to cover the cost of my refurb. So anyway, uh, you can power these up by putting in the, uh, I've got this on an extender wire, obviously, for what I do. Um, and here's the on-off switch right here. So we just press that and the assembly comes to life. It's going to act a little peculiar because it doesn't have a volume control knob hooked up. Uh, it's in squelch on the, the 440 band, so it really doesn't matter. Anyway, so let me show you where the area is. Let me reveal this and show you uh, a little bit of what happens. Okay, this is what it looks like. I removed this black paper cover thing that was sitting basically there. It's gone. And here is the interface between the flex print and the LCD. You can see some blue, let me zoom in a little bit here, some blue, um, I don't know what, a sealer, I, it's not a glue because the, it has no effect on gluing the, the flex print to the, to the glass slide. It just, I think it was intended to seal the, uh, the connections and that may have in fact been part of the downfall so let me show you what happens here let me i'm going to go ahead and remove that strip i can do that with a uh, by just lifting it with an exacto knife so uh i'm going to go ahead and remove that and you can see the actual junction we'll see what it looks like all right so i've started this uh peel back here you can see that i've pulled it out of the way there i've lifted it and it's a continuous strip and sometimes I can get lucky. Sorry for the zoom in here, but everything here is tiny, which the solution to the problem in doing all this work is tools, tools, tools. So I'm gonna, here we go. I'm peeling this back. There we go. Coming off. Oh, it broke. We gotta do some more peeling. Anyway, the junction, of issue is, and I can't even zoom in without a microscope, but there's some really tiny little fingers. You can see all the uh, the connections that come up here, and those all are in a connection to a strip that runs down to where the, L the LCDs themselves, the liquid crystals, are located. So that's the flex print. That's the LCD, and here's the interface. And I'm going to try to do something here that I'm not quite sure how I can do it with, with one hand, but we'll try. So let me go ahead and finish peeling this off, and uh, I'm going to show you what happens. Okay, all the blue sealer has been removed, and we've now got exposure to the lines that run between the flex print and the LCD. I'm going to see if I can't show you something here one-handed. 
to show you why this is the area where the problem exists. So if I go up here, you will see as I run my X-Acto knife along that interface, you can see that magically the lines are coming to life. So, I'm cleaning this off, getting more and more in place here. And I've had people claim that if you replace the, uh, the little four lead pigtail between the control head and the LCD, or the, the control head and the radio, I should say, that that'll fix this problem. Absolutely will not. This, this is obviously an erosion, corrosion, or whatever of this junction right here. You see what happens. So, over time, these things start to die, and once they begin to die, they just keep going. So, hang on a second. Let me uh, let me get a little bit more cleanliness here and show you how far we could bring this thing back. Keep doing this so you can actually see it. Magically make pieces of this reappear. And all I'm doing is likely bridging the gap with my metal X-Acto knife here and getting this thing to uh, make electrical connection long enough to uh, get the LCDs to get in position. So anyway, you can see, if you go back and compare this to, get the light out of that, to where it was, you can see that quite a few of the lines have reappeared, or I guess I should say dots have reappeared. Um, but the question is, why don't you just try to fix it this way? Answer, it won't stay. I have I have done a lot of these. I've played with them because if I could find a way to not have to spend $180 on the, of the customer's money on a part, what a wonderful thing that would be, but this won't last. Um, if I turn this off and set it aside for a day or two, it will look as bad and sometimes worse than, than what it started with. So this I think is just literally the X-Acto blade, get it into perspective here somewhere, there we go. I think the X-Acto blade is just acting as a connector on these lines and allowing them to make enough connection to where the lines appear temporarily. But this is why I am 99% certain that the whole issue is the loss of a line connection between this flex print and this LCD in this area right here because it has all of the effects. You can see in some cases it actually the, the line will disappear as I go through here. So anyway, uh, just FYI, I'll also in just a second show you what the backside of this LCD looks like and what the whole assembly looks like so you get a better perspective without having to uh, rip one apart yourself. Here we go. Let me uh, take this apart further and I'll show you the pieces. Okay, so here we go. I literally broke a fingernail trying to get this thing loose. It was so glued in place. Here is what the LCD interface to the PC board looks like. Let me get this. This is the whole frame assembly, by the way. This sits underneath the, with the light diffuser and all that kind of stuff. It sits under the LCD slide. You see the slide itself. If I turn it upside down, you can actually see it. it looks like. Here's the, uh, the LCD itself and how it's uh, 
soldered, many, many, many connections soldered to the uh, uh, to the uh, PC board backing. Now, one of the things that I mentioned earlier, if you look at this flex print, you can see that this looks like Kapton tape here, typical. But then when you come up here, you can see this white covering that uh, is in place. That's the, the new version does not have that white covering. It pretty much looks just like this. Let's see if I can wreck this and pull this down. It does not, the new assemblies does not have this white covering. That's how I can always tell visually that whether or not if there's a new one. Now, one of the other things that uh, I want to bring up, and that is, now that this thing is completely toast, um, I've been doing this for about five, six years now, replacing these, and I've replaced quite a few of them. Um, I have never seen the new design come back with a line missing yet. So, you know, six years out there, and like I said, I've done a lot of these. And, uh, you know, people say, well, you know, what's, what's the possibility of the new one going bad? I'm not Yezu. I can't tell you for sure. I do know, like I said, they changed the design of the LCD. These are not, by the way, just FYI, Yezu makes and buys these things as components. It's sort of like the Toco filter issue. Um, you know, everybody experienced that. This, I think, has to do with the fact that it's, uh, you know, kind of a 50 pounds in a two pound bag kind of situation where this flex print has a lot of pressure on it up here. It's folded over. And I do think that there's something to do with the, uh, uh, with maybe that blue sealer or something. I mean, I work on all radios. They all got their issues. Uh, Kenwood's ICOM 706s have dissolving PC boards. Uh, Kenwood, I can't tell you how many leaky capacitors I found in Kenwood mobiles. Um, so they all got their issues. Uh, but over time, you know, these, these things degrade. Now, in all fairness to Yezu, what seems to happen most of the time is the units that are in bad shape were mobile. They got exposed to some pretty substantial temperature changes with parked cars in the summertime and, of course, parked cars in the wintertime. And uh, over time, these things begin to develop the stripes. And typically, it's not for you. It's, it's years after the thing's gone in service. So in all fairness, you know, these things aren't designed to last forever. The electronics aren't designed to last forever. The LCD that I'm sure they buy from somebody... I got a sneak and hunch. I know who, but I won't say for sure because I don't know for sure. But uh, they buy these assemblies and they install them, and they, you know, over time they have issues and and the issues manifest themselves. So, you know, if you're going to buy a radio, you're going to have to spend some amount of money on the uh, on the radio over a, a extended period of time. I will tell you right now, I love the A57. The amount of capability in a small sized radio size of a cb radio 100 watts all band incredible own one for 10 years and you got to spend 250 bucks to make the control head look brand new uh i don't think that's a bad deal myself it's a lot better than fixing dissolved trees pc board traces and phase lock loops or dissolved pc board traces on uh, boards because capacitors have leaked and wrecked entire assemblies so anyway um i've never seen any one of those two things on this on the 857 or 897 which by the way that's they're twins they're they're absolutely twins so anyway um the uh this is pretty much it for for now again i'd be happy to answer any questions but uh uh just you know commercial advertisement again for 250 bucks i don't need your radio I have a, a radio dedicated for this sole purpose so we can keep the shipping down and, and I don't need your radio unless you want the radio checked out for some reason. But uh, um, for, for what I charge, and 180 of that being the, uh, uh, I, I charge $250 for the entire effort. Of that, the uh, control board is 180 of it. The, uh, including if I don't, if you don't go through eBay, uh, shipping is included, and also uh, 
Most people pay by PayPal, so there's a three percent of the uh, the two fifty that uh, seven fifty that I I have to pay to PayPal. So um, all things considered, uh, I think uh, I've tried to keep the cost down, and it is significantly better than having to buy a new new uh, control head. Uh, which I do sell to those too periodically, uh, mainly if I can't refurb a unit. If it's so far gone, I typically sell a, a, a complete control head. But uh, anyway, uh, I think the customer definitely got his money's worth here, especially in light of the fact that uh, it needed an encoder rebuild, which again saves on the order of about 40 bucks. So there you go. WD8BWW out.